Live from New York, it's Ask This Engineer over here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to This Engineer over here, who's got a very exciting show, jam-packed yeah. full of cool stuff. It's me, Lady Ada, uh, resident engineer. Do we only have one, I That's guess? Right. It's me uh, in this factory at this moment. I mean, there's like not really a lot of people here today. And <laughs> then um, over here is Mr. Lady Ada, who's on camera control, That's right. answering chat questions and basically copying and pasting the coupon code <laughs> over and over again. We'll yeah, get to that gotta, in a second. I've got to do a lot of this stuff. We've got tons of products. We've got what we had on show and tell. We've got yeah. bitcoins. We've got like crazy stuff. We've got a photo of a cat. What's on tonight's show? Okay. On tonight's show, the code is power boost. This is years in the making. You'll see why soon. We'll go over what was on the show and tell. A massive, amazing jam pack night. The show and tell, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it and we'll talk about that and more. Mailbag will stop by. Let's pack it to mailbag. Talk a little bit about open source hardware. Lots of stuff in the Adafruit learning system. Almost 500 learning guides. We're getting very close. Got a little bit of Time Travel Tuesday when we go back in time in the world of making and more. Werbo Electronics, all the things that are fit to wear and blink. 3D printing, all the news that's fit to 3D print. And then we have a bunch of new products. New, new, new. Yeah. We're going to answer your questions. Let's new it up. We're going to have a trivia question. All that and more on... Wait, are we going to have a top secret sign out yet? Maybe. Maybe? It's so top secret, you're not even going to tell people we'll if it's top secret? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Intense. All right. So, first up, let's pay some bills. Lady Ada, the code is... Min uh, sorry, Minty Boost. Minty Boost. My, power Boost. I've been saying Minty Boost for like the last seven years. I know. Years. This is so much... <laughs> yeah. i got to get used to saying Power Boost. So, okay. Power Boost is the code tonight. And it's 10% off everything in the Adafruit store except for Eagle Cat and gift certificates because those aren't things that we can discount. Everything else it is. And it goes all the way to 11.59 p.m. tonight. It's what runs the lights here. When you buy stuff, that's how we pay the bills here. And um, not only that, but um, it's 10% off everything that we will show you shortly. Yeah. Um, a reminder, we take Bitcoin. So if you're sitting Spend on some them. Bitcoins and you're wondering what you can do with them, Adafruit has taken Bitcoin um, since November of last year. And it's been working out, and we're glad we could offer it as a payment option. There's lots of happy people. Lots of people made miners with Adafruit stuff and then spent the coins they mined. Very cool. Some and of them were even miners who miners, mined. Miners mining. Mining with yeah. miners. And then next up, um, just a reminder. So we still have the May deal going on, which is $100. You get a Adafruit Permaproto added free to your order. And... $200, free UPS ground, continental US, and it all works with the 10% off code. So if you're thinking about you can stack em. buying, it's a good time to be doing that. Okay, Lady Ada, we just had the show and tell. What was, great. was on the show and tell? This was the, the best show and tell ever. Well, we say that can every we say week. say that? Well, let's just say it every okay, week. Okay, fine. All right. I think I just say uh, it. Well, we had a full house. We had ten, nine, ten people on the show. Ten if you count C. Scott and his lovely assistant. Yeah. Um, Jason. So, Jason. Yeah, well, I know, but. Yeah, Jason was on there. He's a young assistant. Yeah. Um, they're not just children, they're also Roberto, your soldering slaves. Roberto no. had a lizard. A lizard. And then. But a lizard, um, I don't know if that really counts. Pedro had Gavin, so there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot. Oh, of and there's no end, Pedro. So actually, there was like 12 semi sentient beings on the show. <laughs> <laughs> the lizard, we'll see if we can train him to We're control. Training, yeah. We'll, with talk this about that we'll talk about that later. Uh, Tony Nicola came by. Tony Nicola has joined Team Adafruit. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and he's helping us out by um, helping beat down all of the issues we have in GitHub and also helping tend to our garden of over 300 GitHub repos. This week, he attacked the Nokia 5110 LCD. He not only cleaned up all the issues, added hardware, SPI support, rotation support, fixed a couple bugs, made it better and, and more exemplier. Uh, he also got it working with the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone with a very nice portable um, open source library that uh, runs with Python, uses the Python imaging library, and he showed us a photo of a cat on the LCD. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Uh, Noah and Pedro, also Team Adafruit, uh, they do 3D Thursdays, which we'll also be talking about. They previewed tomorrow's really cute little project. It's these 3D printed flexible horns that you put on your head, like little devil horns, demon horns, or, you know, maybe just animal horns, maybe, I don't know. Some other animal that has mm -hmm. horns. Um, if you're like cosplaying as a rhinoceros or something, I guess. And uh, they made these with, uh, you can print them on any 3D printer. You can use uh, Ninja Flex, which is a flexible filament for a flexi, non-dangerous uh, cosplay accessory. Or you can, you know, if you don't have that, you can also just use any color uh, filament. 
and uh, they have little strap holders so you can strap them onto your um, headphones or your goggles or whatever you have that's on your head that has little slots you can slot them into. And uh, they also have LEDs by Philby, Paint Your Dragon, who just loves uh, dragon and demon themed costuming. And he made these like fire effects. So it looks like you're wearing like a demo or something on your head. C. Scott and young assistant Jason came by. Uh, C. Scott has shown off his um, analog synthesizers. This time, his young assistant and soldering slave, also a child, uh, Jason <laughs> came by with his own PCB. That's right, he designed his own circuit board in Eagle CAD. It's a 555 timer plus uh, a binary counter, or it, I think it was a binary counter chip, a 4017. I don't know exactly which one this is. And it turns into a little um, a spinner, an LED spinner. So it's a really good project. There's no microcontroller, so it's very standalone, easy to build. Has a couple of dip chips, a couple of LEDs, a couple of resistors, battery connector. Um, so this kid uh, not only designed this entire circuit board in Eagle CAD, the schematic capture of board layout, also sent the boards to um, Osh Park for fabrication, came back, assembled them, and they worked first time. So this kid is actually, uh, so far, better at uh, hardware design than me, because I rarely get the design right on the first run. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you should replace me with Jason. Well, no, if this kid keeps it up, um, he'll probably just end up working at Avert. <laughs> okay. Next up, Roberto, who has been doing a lot of lizard hacking. He has a lizard, an iguana, very cute iguana, and uh, he's doing a very, um, Internet of, thi of Internet of Lizards. Can I say that? The Internet of Lizards? Yeah. It begins here. Internet of Lizards. Uh, a BeagleBone with a web browser, a web server that, uh, and cron jobs. He's like editing cron jobs for the UV light and humidifier to uh, be able to turn it on and off and also set the timers and, and adjust this lizard habitation, habitat. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I was watching him control the stuff and I said, you should give the control to the lizard and maybe get a, a capacitive touch sensor. Yeah, and so then the, the lizard would probably be like, boy, I want it to be more humid. I want more light in here. And then the lizard can communicate with others. And that'll be the beginning of the end. <laughs> yeah. The dinosaurs will come Inter back. Internet of lizards. Yeah. OK, Sally uh, came by. Sally is known for her really incredible uh, wearable Sobel electronics. She built um, a moon lotus jacket, which has this gorgeous lotus leaf, lotus flower on the back. And it's like 3D, so it's kind of popping out and it has these like diffuse elements. And um, it's, it's stuffed full of uh, 60 neopixels that shimmer and glow. And it's called the Moon Lotus jacket. And it is like the coolest jacket. Hopefully we'll maybe get some good photos and we'll put them on the blog. Because this is like the most intense neopixel wearable I've seen. I mean, like there's, there's like putting like three neopixels in your project. And then there's putting 60. And there's like a big gap between those two and it because it's really hard every time you add an led you have to stitch it in so well and make sure you have a good power supply for it um so sally did this and it's a great video so go check out the um, youtube video which is posted probably by now um to see this in action scott g uh is doing a lot of home automation control he's got a pool and the pool evapor the the pool has like a evaporation thing i don't i don't have a pool i don't know how they work <laughs> the water leaves and then i guess all sorts of things you have to pools. so what what is you've had a pool what is it yeah. that what is where does that go that well, floater there, does it go in the pool or is there well, another thing yeah there's a filter and it can get clogged there's all sorts of things that can happen there's temperature there's the chemicals that are in it but you need to always be taking care of this pool okay and he has it go to zively and yeah. a lot of stuff, and if something happens, he has it. So I them. guess if the water goes too down, you have to refill it. So I you guess should probably do that. Yeah, it's one of the things you could do. With I pool. don't know. I have a concrete slab outside my apartment, <laughs> which is like 200 square feet. Um, yeah, so this is a, it's a RF control, and has a little like low power RF thing with an accelerometer, so you can detect how it's oriented, and it sends it to uh, I think a Leonardo, and then the line, Leonardo posts it to Zibly, and so he gets like tweets or alerts or like SMS messages when his pool uh, needs. More water cleaning, I guess. I don't know. Pool things. All you pool people, you're always doing pool control projects. Wasn't that like uh, when Heathkit was coming back? They're like, we're gonna do a pool control project. They said pool, and I think garage door. Yeah. Okay. But we'll see. All right, you're you're basically doing better than Heathkit, Scott. Nice work. Dana came in um, with a project for if you have those little neopixel remains, like you, know, you make a neopixel project, you have those little, little sticks of neopixels or a couple of uh, you know the the um, WS twenty to one like LED pixels on string and stuff. So what do you do with them? So Dana put them in a, in a jar, a mason jar, and, and then some, um, like a plastic bag, like a recycle, recycle your plastic bags from shopping. 
and an AT Tiny board that controls them. And then um, the AT Tiny can act like capacitive touch sensors. The top of the jar is capacitive. So when you touch it, it changes mode. And it's a little, it's a moon jar, basically, like we've seen people do moon jars. But it's full color, and it can do capacitive touch, and it changes colors, and it looks really neat. And um, Danny gives them away as gifts to people. Yeah. So. Okay. If you're Dana's friend, congratulations. You've probably got one of these NeoPixel right. Rainbow Moon Jars. Two more? Yeah, we're finishing up. Yeah. Uh, th uh, there was a lot. Bob came by with a Bumpin' Pete's Coffee uh, radio player based on the Raspberry Pi. He uses MPD, which is like, a, I guess, a music player daemon, guessing, if I had to guess. Linux people don't usually come up with crazy names. If I had a music player daemon, I'd probably call it MPD also. <laughs> um, and it uses a VFD and a Raspberry Pi, and it, it's from a, a little Pete's Coffee tin that he got for Christmas, and he wasn't really sure, uh, you know, what to do with it after eating, but he really liked all this, the, the tin, the coffee was good, but then the tin was even nicer. And it has a slot that's perfect for a little uh, uh, VFT display. So uh, he, he got a little amplifier, put two speakers in it, and it has a Raspberry Pi, and he has a little handle, it's just super cute. And the next week he's gonna show off like, this like boom box, it's like this big, and it's like acrylic cut, and it's got, it's like 40 watts, and it's a little scary looking. Uh, so watch out next week for, for this, like, most hardcore DIY boombox ever. That's, like, NeoPixels and shit. Okay. Okay, wait, last one. Oh, there's one more. Andrew is uh, playing with uh, Arduino Mini, Pro Mini, and the Malexis uh, IR temperature sensors. We have these. We did a couple projects with these. They're sensors that can detect temperature um, by the heat that's bouncing off of something. So it doesn't have to touch the thing. It just, you have to point it. So it's like, you know, when sometimes you see, like, temperature sensors that you point, like an IR temperature gun. So this is just the sensor that's in them. And he made a little mint tin uh, with an OLED in it, and it's, it's a portable battery pack, and then he can point it at things and take the temperature, and he's going to um, have a kid with his wife, girlfriend, partner, soon. And uh, he thinks it's going to be really handy because instead of, like, worrying is like the milk the right temperature and getting, like, a thermometer, he can just point it so you don't have to worry about, like, having sterility and stuff. Just, you know, point the sensor at it, and it'll, it'll bounce off the milk or the, the water or whatever and tell you if it's a safe temperature for the baby. So if you're going to um, have a child, make sure you're really good at code because you don't want to make any sort of <laughs> sign or like overflow mistake where it's like 300 degrees but it says 50 and then you uh, burn your child. That's why it's, it's important to debug your code. Yeah. This is like, you're, you don't want to have like the Therac 25 of like a, uh, milk this accidents. This is the, the story of humankind, parents having kids and saying, you know, they, there are also things that I could probably experiment with. I have some ideas, some gadgets I want to deploy. A lot of technology probably came out yeah. of that. So that's a show and tell. I'm going to throw that as a... Okay. Okay. Now it's stuck in Lady the... Lady Ada, to get on the show and tell, here's what people do. They go to plus.google.com forward slash plus Adafruit. This is my job. Why are you doing my job? And they look for a... Because you just did... That was a long one. I'm, I'm saving No, that. but I'm ready. You're ready? Anyway. You want to do this. Okay. Yeah, so you go to Google plus page plus right. and you look for the post that says, please, you know, comment here to get added to the show and tell circle. But very important, listen, don't do it 10 minutes before <laughs> the show. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Please do it a couple hours at least because we do have to do the preparation with yeah, our demos yeah. and we have to like dye our hair pink. We have a lot of things <laughs> that we're doing before the show. So don't wait till the last minute right. because then you won't get invited. <laughs> but you'll be invited to the show and tell circle and then once you're added to the show and tell circle every single week at Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time, you will join me, him, a photo of our cat, uh, well, the yeah. Factory, and uh, like up to nine other exciting people yeah. to show off your project. We had talked to some folks at Google, and they said this is one of the most watched um, Hangouts, yep. not, not only afterwards because it's recorded, but also live. We are a Hangouts leader. We're, yeah. And they're incredible. And also, what's cool is people have good enough webcams now. It's not like, like the 90s where it's like 640 by 480, and no, it was like it's refreshing. It's in like HD. It's, it's like HD. Cool. It's like super nice, and like everyone's got mics, and like, I don't know, like people figured this out. I think yeah. when that guy from like the podcaster shows up and it's like, kind of like spooky because the voice is too yeah, good. Yeah, they're really good. It's a little too good. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com if you're on the show and tell and we'll send you on a sticker. Okay. Moving right along. We got a lot of stuff to do. Just pack the mailbag. Mm. Letters. We get letters from people. Thank you so much for these letters. They keep us going. Here's an email that we got from Dave. Dave said, I just wanted to say that you folks are the, have the greatest products and learning tutorials that I've ever seen. I am working on a wastewater digester system that's completely different from anything out there. It separates the solids and heavy metals, etc., from the water so that water can be recycled and used to water crops and plants. I'm using your various projects as a part of the prototype machine. Thank you ever so much, Dave. Thank you, Dave. We really like that. Okay. All right. 
send us your cool projects you're working on. Moving Don't right actually now. send us the wastewater digester because it's a little gross. But uh, send us photos and stuff. But if it tastes okay, I'll try. No, what? Okay, so this was posted up on Octopart. I thought we'd just spend just a minute on this. So, Lady <laughs> Ada, this is what Octopart has now. They have the Octopart microcontroller price index, which is a cool service. You can find some Adafruit stuff on Octopart. Yeah. Um, and what they did is they looked at the percentage change. So what is what is this actual item? That okay, so they looked at um, single unit price yeah, breaks for microcontroller. I think they grouped a bunch of microcontrollers. Okay, so this is like the, so like this the is, this, yeah. ARM, LPC, so the, STM. Yeah. So the blue one, if you were buying a single microcontroller, the, the pricing went down. But if you were buying thousands, the price went up. The, that's the, where the price break is. So that's interesting. Yeah, I do notice that like the prices do change a little bit once in a while. Um, I mean, at this point, we actually get bonded pricing. Yeah, what is so bonded pricing? That's a, that's a good question. Um, if you are a manufacturer and you get to a certain size, um, you don't have to be Adafruit size, um, but being Adafruit size certainly helps if you want to get reps to listen to you. Eventually, somebody from a major distribution partner, such as Newark or Arrow or MCM or DigiKey or Mauser, will say, hey, you have spent enough with us that now you have a rep representative. And then you say something like, you know, I really want to use, um, you know, a microcontroller. This is actually kind of bullshit by the way. But what you say is, okay, I want to use a microcontroller in my next project, and I just can't decide whether I want to use the STM32 or an AppMega32, for example. I know they're not the same chip, but whatever. But just bear with me. You say that to the rep, and the rep says, oh, I'll go to both of these companies, and you have to buy like 5000 10000 a year minimum, and they say, you know, give us a, a really good price for these parts because we're going to give you this customer. And then they negotiate, you get the companies to negotiate, some other sales rep negotiates on the price, and you get a better price than what you actually see in DigiKey and Mauser. Like, we don't actually pay DigiKey or Mauser prices anymore because we do this negotiation. And then they come back to you and say, okay, well, they'll offer like 125 and they'll offer 150 or whatever. You pick the part you were going to use anyways because that's kind of how it works. Um, I think, I don't, I don't know who actually picks a microcontroller based solely on price. And then what you say is, okay, well, I'm going to use 10,000 um, a year. Um, and, you know, I'm pretty much... You know, I'm a good customer, so you can trust me. I've got credit with your company because, like, I buy a lot of stuff. So I want you to bond the parts for me. And what that means is they basically buy the parts and hold them for you, mm -hmm. and they don't let anyone else buy them, but you don't have to pay for them. Which Why is, is this a good deal for them? Because they kind of, like, if you're a good customer, also they, 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 they become, like, your registered Do they book that revenue, sort they of, They kind of get future? to book the revenue, but also, like, they, don't, they also book it with, you know... AVR or ST Micro. I guess or you want a. Um, they go to ST Micro and say, "Well, we're we're bonding these parts." ST Micro says, "Okay, fine. We'll give you like ten thousand pieces in stock. They're sitting yeah. in the factory because they need to have some slush, anyways." Yeah. But this means that you not you don't end up getting like, for That's lack of a better word, screwed when you're like, "I have ninety nine percent of the components yeah. I need, but I'm missing one." If you're a microcontroller company, you probably want that too, because then you can like, go up to capacity or not based on what you know is coming up. That's right. Because it's bonded. You can, so what we do is, like for example, a lot of the, the most popular parts that are a little bit difficult to get, we have bonded at um, like Arrow or DigiKey or Mauser. And you can do this, but you have, you know, but the, yeah. the, the deal is, is that you can't bond 10. You have to do like real quantities. So it's like 5,000 parts. So it's like if I'm, if I'm, you know, for example, like I'm getting at Mega 328 uh, in MLF format or whatever, I have to bond 5,000. Like they're not going to, even deal with me unless yeah. I'm dropping like seven thousand dollars on this per yeah. component. There's like a line item minimum. Yeah. But then they get to basically, you know, you're not gonna because they have it bonded. It even though it's like they have a little bit of risk. There's not much because they have a deal with like Atmel. Like I'm sure they have a deal. They're like, look, they didn't sell. We're gonna return them. Like they're not used or they get sold to somebody else. Like the chips are good for a couple of years. They don't spoil or anything. And then in exchange, you know, you basically only go to them directly, right? So once I have something bonded for me, I'm not going to go buy it from anywhere else because it's like, well, I already have them ready to go at um, one of the distributors. So they basically lock in your, uh, you as a customer, which is a pretty good deal for everybody. I like it because I don't have to, like, keep, you know, all these parts in stock. If I have fluctuations in demand, it's not a big deal because, like, I can pull or keep um, bonded stock as necessary. Okay. All right. We're running along. Um, we have a special preview. This arrived today. It's a box. It's I a love gigantic boxes. box. Now, if you look behind there, there is a Samsung 4D1, which you can is see in the a couple of tons. So um, you can imagine what's in here. We're not going to um, tell you what's in the box, but Ooh. we will be taking photos soon. It's very big paint. Yeah. All right. <laughs>
So next up, we have some special news, as some of you saw on the show and tell. Tony DeCola is joining Adafruit as an engineer. We met Tony on the show and tell. He was showing fantastic projects. Um, he would show up and have these uh, amazing things. He won a Hackaday contest for the um, uh, the, the demolition the man. demolition man, where Demo. you would you would curse and it would, and then you'd have to it would come out and would find you. And it would probably gone off like four times on my discussion of parts bonding yeah. and negotiation. And <laughs> so um, Tony's going to be helping you with a lot of uh, firmware, the, hardware, for, tutorials, firmware, hardware, projects, stuff. cool stuff. He yeah. does great projects. He will be doing even more great projects. Um, you'll see them all over the internet. He's going to, yeah. you know, he's continuing to do projects and put them on Hacky Day as well as other sites. Yeah. But he'll also be um, helping us um, with a little bit of um, just ma maintenance because we have uh, 300 GitHub repos, 500 tutorials. Uh, so you can imagine if we have like even one issue a day for every like 10, uh, you know, projects or tutorials, which is not. It's more like 100 a day yeah. total. Um, so, it adds up really fast. So we have we have hundreds of you know little typos and things to fix, and he'll help me with that. Yeah. So everyone in the chat, give Tony a warm welcome. This is yet again another example of this uh, fantastic community of people that share their projects, and it can lead to some amazing things. Um, a million years ago, I started Hackaday, and that's kind of how we know Phil B. Yeah. Um, who you see his code everywhere and everything LED. Yep. And then we met Tyler and Justin um, on the show and tell. We also met uh, Noah and Pedro, and so um, it's a pretty cool world when you share your projects. I love these people that we meet that are that are like internet friends. Yeah, it's great. But it's like open source hardware has no, uh, you know, there's no, boundaries. There's no borders. There's, there's no, no borders. Yeah, it's great. It's like this is. The, this I feel is like we're using technology the right way. We are totally using technology the right yeah. way. Okay, next up. Um, so we have some news in the world of open source hardware. Okay. Um, so uh, one quick um, maker businessy thing, yeah. Because we're gonna run out of time unless I, I know, start moving really fast. So check out the article that we had on our site. Um, the <laughs> Newegg's legal officer, uh, Lee Chang, has a incredibly uh, amazing statement about what they do. So basically, can I say passionate? I say passionate. Yeah. So passionate. Yeah. Basically, at Newegg, we're always <laughs> believed in. We have always. Be uh, believe that paying off extortionists only encourages more extortion. There has to be negative consequences of suing Newegg without just cause. So they fight and they win patent trolls now. Yeah. And um, Not only that, but they got the court out of East Texas and into California, and yeah. then they won, which is actually and, really good yeah. thing. I wonder how they, how they did and that. When you talk to President Obama, for the folks who didn't know this, you got to ask President Obama a few questions. He made some suggestions. You said patent reform. It's slowly but surely happening, but one of the things that's cool is companies like Newegg are um, standing up and fighting. And the patent system um, has a lot of benefits and also has a lot of uh, drawbacks. And the patent troll thing is one of them. And uh, we buy all of our computer equipment when we can through Newegg. And so that's one of the reasons. So uh, check out the story, really cool stuff. And of course, um, speaking of patents, um, so we have open source 3D printers for sale on our site. Um, there is a bunch of stuff happening in the 3D printing community. Um, on the blog post, I said, you know, it's a horrible business right now, making and selling 3D printers, because we don't do that. there's a lot of controversy about patents that are being filed, what's prior art, what's in the community, what's not in the community, what should be open, what should not be open. Um, what we decided to do is we have, right now, the only shipping 3D printers that we have is the Tazbot. That's the, it's a FSF certified printer, mm -hmm. fully open source. And we have PrinterBot, which has, I think, like most of it's open, mm -hmm. um, or it's open with like a non-commercial license. And then we're deciding what's next for other printers. There's the Form Labs, there's the Cube, and there's the MakerBot. So those are all. I would like to carry the Form Labs yeah. actually. So I'm hoping that um, so I, I I told Scott like, hey guys, like when you when you're ready, I'd love to carry it. I'm, I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. So that's Hopefully. one of the things that um, you know we've decided to have open source printers in our store. So for the folks out there that want to see open source 3D printers succeed, the way to do it is convince everyone that that's the type of 3D printers that you should buy. And previously in our show, we had Autodesk. Uh, they announced that they have a 3D printer in there. They started, with the, word, they started with the word open. And, yeah. I want, and I wrote an article when um, Autodesk acquired Instructables, and it says nothing to do with Instructables. It was actually Christy and Eric. And so Christy and Eric, they run instructables yeah. but now they're steering Autodesk and you can see for the first time 
you normally don't associate open desk with uh, open uh, desk. Auto desk. Yeah. Auto desk is not open desk. Shoot, I ruined it. I signed NDAs. They're going to change it to open desk now. No. Um, you normally don't associate auto desk with uh, open source. Any kind of open desk. But yeah. they're doing, and of course it makes sense. Open 3D printers, but then maybe you buy the Autodesk software. Who knows? Yeah. But anyways, I think it's really cool. So keep an eye on it. And, um, you know, we took some financial risks. The 3D printers, the open source ones, are a little bit more expensive than um, some of the closed source alternatives. So if you ever want to get a 3D printer, this is a good way to do it. All right. Next up. Adafruit Learning System, up, up, almost up to 500 tutorials. I know. So I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. So I'm going fast. Better yeah, fast. let's hit these fast. Fast. And, uh, this is a tutorial for the SPI FRAM. We'll talk about that shortly. It's just a little breakout tutorial, how to wire it up, how to use it, how to test it, Arduino libraries, stuff like that. Okay. This is a tutorial by the Codebender team. Codebender is kind of an interesting, it, it's, it's not a web IDE, it's a web browser IDE. It's actually the, the Arduino, it uses a Firefox plugin to allow you to program an Arduino from within your browser. It's kind of an interesting idea. And they added Flora and Trinket and Gemma capability um, once we gave them Windows 8 signed drivers. So that's really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, they also did a tutorial, and we even included um, on the last page the, the code that when you click, if you have the plugin installed, it's a free plugin, and if you click it, it will um, automatically download into your Arduino or Flora or Leonardo or Trinket or whatever. So it's really okay. cool. Check it out. And it's, um, if you have a Flora and you try this, let us know if it works. It's cool because it's kind of the future. You're going to be always, you're you're going to probably avoid the an IDE. You're just going to be in a browser, and you're going to be able to directly connect your microcontrollers. So I think cool. it's a, a very interesting idea. Yeah. Next up, um, we showed this today on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, this is the learning guide that goes along with it. I'm going to show the video shortly. So if you ever wanted to make a cell phone blocking pocket, that's how you do it. Um, next up, this is uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, but it's live now. This is 3D printed. LED fire horns by Noah and Pedro, and Philby did the fire code. This is yeah. an awesome example. I actually just of, really want, I want them now. Of all the goodness that you can do with electronics and 3D printing. And cosplay. I love, I love the yeah. mix of the three. This is perfect. Yeah, because you know, 3D printing is kind of stuck in your basement or garage or workshop or hackerspace or makerspace or whatever, but you can 3D print stuff, put electronics with it, and walk out the door and then show and share. It's cool. Uh, next up. This no, is the I squared C FRAM. Another FRAM. Same as the <laughs> F SPI FRAM, but I squared C. Okay. And then um, this is our Little overview tour, yeah. of how we created the designed the injection molded case. So this is Mike Dole, one of the best designers I think in the I world. I learned something from this tutorial. He did um, the Pi Raspberry case. Pi. Beagle and Black. Adafruit case, yep. And so Beagle you can. Beagle and Black case also, which was not in here, but it's similar design. Yeah. And a future case. Yeah. Um, this one is the printer bot NinjaFlex extruder upgrade, and we're going to show this video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but know that you can take a printer bot, which is a great low-cost printer, and upgrade it to print out stuff you know that's flexible. Cool? This is the design that they released is totally open source. We didn't patent it. Yeah. We, are, <laughs> we are improving and releasing uh, content that this would be like probably you could patent it. It's like it's a mechanical design, right? Yeah, but maybe. It, but we're not. We're giving it away for free yeah. to anybody. No, and Pedro, they do it. I hope. I hope the printer bot upgrades their yeah, design. Yeah, they put the files up and you can print out. Go this for and it. Do it. Okay. And then this just is hot power off boost. the press. This we'll is talk about the, the power boost shortly. But this is a little okay. tutorial that goes with it. All right. Except time travel Tuesday. All the things in the maker world that has happened in the past. Um, where there's so many things that I only pick one each week now because the shows are getting really busy. So this is from 1907, and in 1907, Rachel Carson, she's a marine biologist, and she uh, wrote a book, uh, Silent Spring, and other writings that credited the global environment movement. So when you think about the Earth and Earth Day and all the things about nature mm -hmm. and climate change and all this. There are some debates about the science in the book, but I think that the fact, I mean, that is up, you know, th as this was written a while ago. Did we even have science in 1907? <laughs> this no, she early. was written in 1962. Yeah, no, I'm saying, but, like, this, this wasn't, like, starting now. This is... No, this is it's very yeah. interesting. It was, like, you know, over 40 years ago, yeah. and what's interesting, or 50 years ago now, and what's interesting is at how much she, she um, changed the way we view nature. Yeah. And the way that, like, the idea that we would be doing things that could be, like, harming the planet, it was, it was totally alien, I think, and then she yeah. kind of brought that in, and, and 
revolutionized how we think about environmentalism. Started okay. it. Wearables, every Wednesday we have our show at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have a bunch of cool stuff. Amy on the blog is, I think, one of the uh, best spotters of cosplay and costuming in the world. She has amazing posts each day. She went to, uh, no, she uh, covered a conference. Yeah. Um, these are two that I really like. This is Aww. Princess <laughs> Darth Vader, and this is Carmen Sandiego. I thought both of them, and right in front of the Barnes & Noble, Booth because it was a yeah thing. that's a great yeah there's a lot of cool costumes costume. there's like 50 of them that you can just watch so um, we have a short video this is the cell phone blocker pocket video I'm gonna play wearable right Wednesday now. okay wearable Wednesday video. Becky Snowden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we're on to 3D. So um, every week, tomorrow is Thursday, so every week look at the, the best happenings around in the 3D printing world. And I'll, um, I'll say this, the one thing I like about the Adafruit site is because we don't have uh, sponsorship and we will never take ads on the Adafruit blog, and I've said this so many times in video, I can't go back on it now, <laughs> we'll never do that. And so that also means we're completely editorial free to cover anything, so we cover printers that we don't sell, we cover printers we don't like, we cover printers we like. <laughs> we, we, cover. <laughs> we don't like this, but we, we cover it. Yeah, but we, but it's the one place. Yeah. And 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 I remember talking to many um, companies that have three D printers, and I said, you know, you can just you can publish everything about three D printers. It doesn't matter. And then, oh, you can't like you no, know. No, I know. You know oh, we, that's we, a make a, we make a printer. statement. We have, so, yeah. so, anyways, I th I think it's cool. So. Um, if you want to see a bunch of cool stuff about 3D printing, um, check out 3D Thursday starting tonight at like 12.01. We have like a billion posts. Um, okay, what's, Matt up, what's, what's going on tomorrow? Well, there's just a couple things. I, I, this was, um, I think, it was show, show and STL. That's cool. Instead of show and tell. And it, you could print out a game controller. And then this, someone made a... Um, a whole filament a holder. Plastic, a filament holder for okay. a printer bot. That's nice. And then um, we also had the... Um, Printer bot Ninja, Ninja Flex exterior, yeah, yeah. and so this is um, a little a gift that you can see, like how how it eventually, uh, or why it doesn't work right away. Yeah, so that's <coughs> it, it curls in because it's too yeah. soft. So the additional piece is a little, it's a little kind of shape yeah. that snaps in. Yeah. And it guides it, and they said they worked on it for a week until yeah. they got it to be perfect. But so now it works we're really actually well. going to show this video right really? now. Really? Yeah. Okay, show the video. If you've ever tried printing Ninja Flex on a printer bot, you may have noticed a small problem. It doesn't actually extrude so well. PET material is so flexible that the filament actually buckles right before reaching the hot end. The drive gear and the hot end are so far apart that the filament can actually get tangled. Our 3D printed upgrade eliminates this problem by guiding the filament directly to the drive gear, removing any room to buckle. Designed to print right on your printer bot in just 10 minutes, the installation is easy and requires no extra parts. Remove both screws from the spring-loaded arm. Check out our guide on the Adafruit Learning System for a full tutorial. Place the part over the two screw holes and use the existing screws to attach the filament guide. Angle the spring screw into the heat block and apply pressure to align the spring-loaded arm into place. Hold down the arm while fastening the screw into the motor. Adjust the spring to increase the pressure on the bearing. This will tightly grip the bearing to the filament, pushing it up against the drive gear, allowing it to extrude. Now you can print NinjaFlex! For optimal print quality, set the temperature of the extruder to 250. You'll want to disable retraction while extruding and decrease the travel speeds down to 30%. So if you want to try out some Ninja Flex on your printer bot, definitely check out our upgrade and let us know how it goes. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit.
Thanks, Alrighty. guys. Alrighty. Okay. Great video. And um, before we go on to, uh, I have to cut some segments tonight because we have a lot okay. of new products. So before we go on to new products, code Power Boost, ten percent off everything in your store. Get okay. on, get on it. Okay, Lady Ada, it's new is product it time. Is it time for new? Yeah, okay. it's new product time. So the first thing I'm going to show Lady Ada is we're completing our Gawkin tour with yeah. videos each week. Okay. And here's the first Gawkin here. video. It yeah, no, I know. Whoa. Yeah, so this is Destrand Beast, and this is a wonderful video. Whoa, that's super cool and creepy. Yeah. This is a kit you can buy at Ada for build, and this is what it does. That's lovely. Yeah, isn't that great? Okay. Nice work. All right, so okay. Lady Ada, we're they going to- They have the lights to, on because um, I'm going to show off stuff. Yeah, so here we go. Okay, do this thing. We got these cell phone antenna looking things. What are yeah, these? they're cell phone antennas. Are, are they cell phone antennas? They are cell phone. It's as if you're putting things in the store each week because we're going to be building an open source cell phone, Lady Ada. We might be, but I had to get these antennas in first. Oh. Uh, these are two little antennas. I could show them on um, the overhead real fast just because okay. they're, they're, the scale is hard to, to tell. Um, yeah, they're, they're shorty little antennas. Uh, they have SMA connectors, which is pretty common for cell phone stuff. And there's one that's right angle, and it, it's, um, you know, it rotates around. But once you tighten it, it kind of uh, sits in place. And then there's this straight style, which also rotates, but doesn't really matter because it doesn't okay. matter. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're both GSM. They do, I think, quad band. We have the data sheet with the thing. And they have very nice um, VSWR. I think it's less than two, which is pretty <clears> good for, like, pretty basic antennas. Okay. Um, we'll be using these for future cell phone stuff, such as cell phone shields, cell phone breakouts, and DIY open source cell phones, which we don't have quite yet. So okay. yeah. we should get right. this ready. Next up, more of these things. We had these last week, too. Yeah, these I, I'm not going to show because actually they're, they're too small. These are DIY stereo plugs and jacks. So this is if you're making your own connectors or cables. Um, I just always use these. They're so, so handy. We have the plug type, which we just showed you, which is a stereo plug which is tip um, ring sleeve. Hey, can you uh, click the first one? Yeah, that one. Uh, so you can see tip ring sleeve, so it's stereo, ground, left and right. And then um, next photo, and then next photo. And then you unscrew it, and then there's three tabs. There's the ground tab and the two side tabs. And then there's a nice um, strain relief spring as well. Uh, so you can make your own cables, really high quality cables. And we have a, the matching connector, which is the jack. I think you brought out this like old shuffle. Look. Yeah. This is what I got. So I just show the plugs in, whatever. It's yeah. an audio, it's audio jack. Yeah, then you got this you know, these photos are so high res, you can't tell if it's like a quarter inch or eighth inch. So these are eighth yeah. inch. And this is the jack, which is, you know, it's a little, it's capsule-y looking because it's, it's bigger. And it snaps in, matches perfectly, but it also matches any other stereo connection. So this is good for making like, you know, sometimes okay. you have to make a special cable with splitter or whatever. So again, three tabs. And screw it together when you're done. Oop. Get strain relief. That's me, Lady Ada. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. That's it. So we have we have a couple different sizes now. I think we have like one or two more coming in, but we, I think we have m almost all of them by now. We have uh, eighth inch, quarter inch, um, stereo, uh, four, uh, tip ring ring sleeve, TRS, yeah. uh, two point five millimeters. So like it kind of covers like all the weird audio connectors. Okay. Which is handy. Next up. Hits keep coming. Slim style. Uh, USB mini B. This is for making your own USB cables. We have them in many different varieties. We got the USB A type, B type, mini B, micro B, whatever, all the different types. This is a mini B and this is sort of a slim Apple style. Um, but of course it's not only for Apple cables. This is what most people are familiar with. It has a nice kind of over molded look, but you don't have to like get, you know, it's for custom cables or, or custom breakouts. Once in a while you want to do like a weird custom thing or you want to um, break out the data lines or something or, or do something unusual. So this is a really good connector for that. Okay. And uh, we don't have the picture of it snapped apart, but if you go to the product page, it snaps yeah. apart. And then you solder to these little tabs. They're not too hard to solder to. And you get x 12 5 pins, and then you can um, snap it together, and there's a little strain relief. Yeah. Okay. Next up, this is a transducer, right? Yeah. Hold on. I have to get my demo ready. This is I'll show these nice pictures a first. surface transducer. We had a little bone conductor, and this is sort of similar to that. Um, except it is a, uh, hold on, let me get this power thing going on here. It is a um, larger version. It's not a bone conductor. I mean, you could use it for bones, but it's, it's kind of big. What it's actually meant for is um, to use in, um, uh, sorry, it's meant to be used in um, uh, tabletop transducers. So can you go to the overhead? Okay, and I'll, I'll show this overhead. off. So yeah, we have this surface and have the transducer. 
and when I put it down, it turns the whole thing into a speaker. So yeah. it, it's not like the bone conductor, which you have to place up to your bones. This is like much bigger than that. Um, but it has this like rubber bumper thing on top. And then um, this is weighted. It's a little, it's a little hefty, the, the uh, coil holder. So that when you put it onto a surface, the rubber kind of sticks to the surface and it turns that surface into a transducer. Cool. So it's got like tables or you can actually put it up against a wall if you can get it to stick to a wall. Um, you can put it against like bowls or cups or whatever to turn them into um, cavities for uh, resonance. Yeah. Um, it, this is a uh, much higher output one than the little one that we have, the, the little bone conductor. It's a um, 4 ohm 3 watt. So you need like an amplifier. You use one of the amplifiers in the store. They, it, you want it just like a speaker and then you just put it down when you're ready to turn on the music. Okay. All right, moving right along. We still got a long way to go. We got a bunch of these. <laughs> yeah. So. These are eight by eight off. matrices. Yeah. We had these already, but in round. Um, yeah. And now we have them in square pixel because everyone loves square pixels. I love square okay. pixels. I finally got square pixels. So we have them in blue, bright I, blue. I really like these photos. So let's do a quick photo tour. Okay, let's just do a photo tour. Yeah. Blue. So blue. We have them in orange, amber, whatever. Yeah, One that's other. orange. Orange, yellow, nice yellow. Pure green, which is the 3.4 volt green, not the 2.3 volt yeah. green. So and then we have green. another type. And then white. Yeah, has a little, that yellow phosphor. Really bright white. Yeah, you can see how bright it is. It's so there. bright, you can't, like the photo doesn't look quite yeah. right. You have to look at the reflection to see how bright it is. Yeah, and then when you hook these up, you can do all sorts of things with them. Yeah, we also have them uh, as backpacks for, let me get this set up. And it's actually a good way to show them off as well. Hold on. Take your time. I'm trying some nice yeah, photos. Yeah, you show here. off those photos while I get this yeah. demo going. What happened to my demo? Hello? Uh-oh. There you go. Okay. Can you go to the uh, overhead? Okay, so this is the uh, the demo, and I turn off the light to make it clear. It's flickery because it's, it's freaking out the camera because it's so bright. Yeah, you can put it off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Think. There you go. Um, so this That's is cool. the demo showing the, the square pixels. They look really good. And I'll actually, um, I put headers on this so I can swap these out. So that's the bright white. You can tell because it's bright white. And then this one is yellow, I think. Yeah. So this one is like the yellow color. It's a little hard to tell that it's yellow, but it's yellow. And then let me get the blue one. And then the backpacks just make it easier to use. And you can use the matrices if you want to do multiplexing on your own. A lot of people don't want to, so if you use the if you get the backpacks, it adds like six dollars. But you can just do everything over I squared C. This is blue. The blue is like really, really bright. You can see how bright it is. And then we also have amber. And then somewhere around here, oh yeah, I've got the green too. Hold on. And this is this is the amber color. This is you know, a little bit redder than the the green. And then we have the green one, which is really, really bright too. The green one is like for some reason like super crazy hella bright. Yeah, um, but that's good. You can always dim the display if you want. The the backpacks have the ability to dim them. So I always suggest like getting them with the backpacks. But um, if you want to like, if you know, if you're like, oh, I have 16 pins or whatever, and you just like you're crazy for multiplexing, go ahead and multiplex them. I just love the square pixels. I think they're so much cuter than the round ones. Okay. Round ones kind of classic though. So yeah. And we'll be getting, uh, we, we're missing a couple colors, like we're missing red and a yellow green. Um, the ones that I got, the samples, I didn't think were bright enough. So we're getting, them re uh, we're getting more made that are brighter and we'll have the other colors later. But these were good enough to uh, get started with. Okay. All right. Next up, I really like these. Oh, the little mini no pixels? Yeah, so these are really beautiful. So these are a little different than um, your regular old LEDs. They have four pins, like what's going on here? These aren't just like, yeah. what's well, going well, on Yeah, well, RGB LEDs have four pins, but these are um, smart NeoPixel type LEDs. They have a, a WS2812 chip inside of them. You so can like, almost kind of see the chip. I don't know if we have so, a photo that shows the chip. No, we're gonna do a close up. So, you, so what you're saying to me is that these are like bread boardable NeoPixels. Yeah, these are bread boardable NeoPixels. And mm -hmm. we put the little like lens flare on them, which I think is kind of cute. No, that came out straight out. That, this is just an iPhone. Took this <laughs> <laughs> we gave it a little bit of glamour, uh, just to, to make it clear. It's it's they're shorty five millimeter clear LEDs. We also yeah. have them in diffused eight millimeter. These are really different. different. 
Some people, oh, some people want them um, in this. And these are a little brighter than the 8mm, but they're not as diffused. So there's a trade-off. Um, there might be situations where you want to have it have more of a sparkle. And I have it just powered here from um, a trinket. And you can just sort of see like how and, incredibly bright these are. And They're this so is bright. one of the things that I should be clear. You can individually control each one of these. That's right. Each one of these yeah. uh, is powered from a data in pin. It's a yellow wire, which uh, they, the way they work out, they're really easy to breadboard because you just connect them one after the other and the data in goes to the data out pin. Um, and so these are just like NeoPixels or any other, you know, WS2811 or 2812, you know, whichever, yeah. same thing. Um, but they're through hole style, and then yeah, they're a little clear LEDs. But yeah, they're a little shorter. You can kind of see how they're a little half height. That might be okay. I mean, you can oh. diffuse them with stuff, or you can use them as point source lights. Um, they're they're quite bright and um, very uh, unidirectional, very point sourcey, because there's like the, the way the lens is made. They're not diffused. So there's not anything. So just someone had a question about the uh, previous thing. What? Well, there, no. there's no such thing as an RGB version of these yet, right? Is no, there? there are, but we don't have a driver for it. Oh. And for the I've RGB, not seen those yet. No, no, I've, I've seen them, but they're they're a real pain in the ass because you, oh, really? you need like so many pins to drive them. We have bicolor, uh, which is a low cost way of doing it. The thing with here's the deal with RGB: if you can't individual control every color really nicely, it kind of isn't as much fun. Mm. So I'm thinking about how to, you know, I might do it eventually, but also the RGB ones are kind of pricey. Like the, the matrices are like 20 bucks. So for that price, you can get like a 16 by 32, you know, matrix, like the the, um, the LED wall style matrix. So I have to think about it. I, I like these little matrices because they're small and they're simple. And like a lot of people are kind of happy with one color. And we also buy color yeah. as well. We have a red okay. and green with mixed to make orange. All right, moving really along, we got some frams. Fram. <laughs> These are framtastic. Yeah. We have fram in both I squared C, 32 kilobits, 32 kilobytes, and then SPI fram, which is, I think, eight kilobytes, right? Okay. Yeah, eight kilobytes and 32 kilobytes. Right. So this is, this, this is kind of weird stuff. It's, if you know what SRAM is, it's a sort of a RAM that you can store fast and read fast, but it loses data when the power lost. And then there's like EEPROM slash flash, which is, um, you know, you can also store data, but it takes a while to write the data. You can read it very fast, but writing it takes a while. And you usually have to write it in, in um, blocks. And you also need to like do this like 12 volt erase thing. Usually it's built in, but like it's kind of, with flash, it's like usually you have to do a deal where you erase a page and then you can rewrite that page, so you have to buffer it. So it's a little bit weird if you want to stream data to flash, especially if there's breaks, because you can either lose it or you have to overwrite the page over and over again. So uh, FRAM or FRAM is, is kind of in the middle. It's ferroelectric RAM. It's kind of like a recent, recently popular thing. It's not a new invention, but recently they've become uh, more popular. And we thought it was kind of interesting. It might be used for data logging. This kind of combines the best of SRAM and Flash EEPROM. So like SRAM, it's uh, instantaneous. You can read or write like 10 to the 12 times. I mean, like basically you don't have to worry about where leveling or anything like you do with Flash um, in most cases. Um, way more than the 10,000 writes that you usually get with, with Flash. This is like, like a million times more, I guess. It's a lot. I don't worry about it too much. Um, and you, when you lose power, it retains the memory. So it, it instantaneously writes, but you don't have to worry about page writing. You don't have to worry about erasing the page beforehand. And it stores it instantly. So when you lose power, it's saved. So it has like the speed of SRAM with the non-volatility, the power off memory storage of Flash EEPROM. It's what a is, nice combo. What does FRAM stand for? Ferroelectric Random Access Memory. Wow. Because you can randomly access any okay. part of memory. And we have an SPI and I squared C. We got the five volt safe versions, which means that we got the largest that were available in five volt. And for some reason, the five volt I squared C and the five volt SPI were not the same um, quant uh, capacity. The I squared C is much larger, but it's not as fast as the SPI. The SPI, you can clock at 20 megahertz, so you can read or write at 20 megahertz uh, SPI clock. But it's only eight kilobytes. The squared C is 32 kilobytes. I don't know if it's similar. We have uh, Arduino libraries for both, but they're really easy to use. Like you could port it to any microcontroller trivially. They're actually kind of like drop-in replacements for 24 or 25 series logic. So if you are series memory, so if you're using 24 LC or like 25 LC series um, flash or, or EEPROM or whatever, it kind of acts the same. Okay. Fram. Next up. 
I, I, up. I currently have some issues that I think only the the charger doctor could. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to get the get charger current, doctor in here? Current. Current. current? It's kind of funny. Okay. okay. So this is a charge doctor. Charger doctor. What's a charge doctor do? The charger doctor is something that I actually got for debugging uh, the power boost, which we'll talk about next. And it's this little like inline little dongle that um, you power to USB and it passes the data lines and then it Good. does a, uh, a, here's a charger doctor. Hold on, let me, uh, let me see. Maybe it'll look a little better if yeah. I turn see? on the light. One second. All right. The, okay. the charge doctor is in. The charge doctor is in. <laughs> So um, it's a little dim because it's light, but it, it displays the voltage and um, the current. And this is from the um, power boost. You can see it's a little bit, it's like 5.2 volts. And then what you can do is like you can plug in, you know, like for example, I'm going to plug in an iPhone into here. And um, it'll tell me, i got the phone here, and I'll say, oh, it's drawing, you know, uh, 25 milliamps, 28 milliamps. It's actually going down because I just recently charged this um, phone up. But uh, you can sort of watch uh, how much current and voltage is being drawn. It doesn't do watts, sorry. It does voltage and amps. It's not open source. I don't have the code for this. So you can open up and reprogram the pick or whatever's inside. But uh, other than that, I, I have no, you know, this is what you get. Um, but it's very handy for debugging because, you know, you can see what your current draws at all times. It's kind of chunky, but works really well. It's low cost, simple. Um, so I use it all the time when I was debugging um, the power boost uh, to see, like, what's the voltage I'm actually getting at? What's the current draw, you know? Is it working at all? Um, handy little little guy, charger doctor. Okay. Doctor's in. Um, one question back on these real quick. Someone wants to know, can you use these um, displays? What, the LEDs? These for the Times Square watch. Um, no, it's actually a different size. Different size? These are a little okay. bit smaller. All but right. we'll, I'll try to get um, square ones for the Times Square watch. Okay. I think I tried to and they didn't have them, but they had these. It's a little, a bit of a right. journey sometimes, getting LEDs made. This is our last product of the night, world premiere, been worked on forever. Yeah. This is the logo for the series of products that we're doing. This is the Power Boost 500. Like Yay. Data. This is it, it's here. This is it. These yeah, I finally, photos. well, I've been working on this for like nearly two years because I, well, not like continuously, but I, I started this a long time ago. It was called the Minty Boost Pro and it was gonna be the TPS 61029. And I actually got the design done. I had the stencil made. I had the PCBs. I had like parts. I had everything ordered. I had it ready to go. And then um, one out of ten would blow up on the tester. Yeah. And I could never figure out why. And like TI kind of wasn't very helpful. And I was like, I can't sell something that ten percent of the time breaks during test. Yeah. Like, and I wasn't even doing anything weird. But I was like, whatever I'm doing in, t in test is what people are going to be doing. Like, yeah. Connecting, disconnecting loads, and like measuring the current. And I was just like, I mean, one day I'll figure it out. It's some instability issue. So you but in the meantime, that, I even made something better. You folks who watch this, you get Ask an Engineer for just one hour once a week. I get Ask an Engineer 24 hours a day. So for the last two years, um, this has been in, in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, it was just this ongoing thing. So this is a really big deal for us. So uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to talk I'll about show more? The, yeah, I'll show this. Uh, well, let's talk, let's uh, show the photos. Can we show the... Um, yeah, which photo? This one? The oh, you didn't get the straight on photo. Which Ooh. one? No, I just I we got this in uh, right before the show. Okay. Yeah. Can you go to I mean, I the uh, ISO photo? This can one? you zoom in on the on the board? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, why don't you zoom in on the board? Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Zoom in. Yeah, we got. So then I can I can kind of talk about it. Yeah. Wow, nice nice quality photos. You can yeah. you can uh, show the photo. Yeah. So this is a little it's a little boost converter. It's a lot like the the idea behind the Mindy Boost. It takes battery in and gives you a USB connector or five volts out. And I kind of wanted to make something that was really flexible. So this is uses this uses the TPS61090, which is a chip from TI, and it's a two amp uh, boost converter. And what that means is that you can um, draw two amps from the battery, basically, like eh, here and there, like technically, but it's two amps max through the, the battery connection that goes through the, the switch and the inductor. So if you have, um, it works down to 1.8 volts. So if you have a 1.8 volt input, which has like maybe two kind of dead batteries, it can boost it up to five volts at 500 milliamps. And if you have um, a light poly battery or lithium ion battery, which is 3.7 volts, it's, it's almost twice as high, you can draw one amp. So the higher the input voltage, the more current you can get out. So it says 500 because that's the, the guaranteed voltage. If you can power it, it'll give you 500 milliamps. 
but you can actually get up to an amp from a, a, a lithium ion or a lithium uh, polymer battery. Uh, the chip in the middle there is the controller and there's an inductor and it's a synchronous um, boost converter which is something I really like. One of the nice things about synchronous converters is first off they're more efficient. So it's more than 90% efficient in converting voltage. And if you can turn it off and with enable pin but it's by connecting the enable pin to ground and you don't need a switch to disconnect the output. It actually disconnects on the in, uh, inside of the chip the output from the input. So one of the lower cost boost converters if you try to turn it off or disable it, it'll, it'll just won't boost. It'll, it'll just let the battery voltage go through. So it never actually turns off the output. It's kind of a side effect of most boost converter uh, designs, the way that the diode and the inductor works. In this case, the diode is inside, is simulated with FETs inside of the chip. So it has a true disconnect. Um, it's pretty efficient. I measured, you know, boosting from a LiPo battery up to 500, uh, 5 volts, 500 milliamps, I got like 92% on the tester, the tester checks the efficiency. So you get like 92%. You can get up to 95, you know, if you've got like exactly the right kind of voltage input and voltage output. But in general, it's over 85%. So you just, it's pretty efficient. So if you don't want to have to get it, it's, it's often more efficient than a regulator, like a linear regulator. So if you have a couple batteries, maybe better just put three AA batteries on this or two AA batteries and get five volts out. Um, there's two LEDs. There's a power LED, um, which is uh, in the corner there next to the USB and you can see it lit and it tells you when the power is good. There's also a low battery LED that's red and you can't see it because this battery is charged but it lights up when the battery voltage drops below 3 volts. And uh, it comes with a USB connector so you can solder it in and uh, it has iOS resistor so you can plug in any iPhone or iDevice yeah. or actually it works with like Android stuff too by the way. Everyone kind of followed the same convention um, and it will recognize and, and work well. So it's, it's really, uh, I want to design it for like everything. You use it to charge your Gadgets, you can use it to power your Arduino, you can use it to power your Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or other single board computer. Anything that can charge over USB, because it is guaranteed to provide 500 milliamps, and that's the USB kind of standard, um, you can charge with this. And uh, it's a little bit more flexible than a battery pack and more powerful than Minty Boost. And you, know, you can, can you know, um, turn on and off with the enable pin, and there's a little battery output, and there's breakouts, and a JST jack. It's just kind of like an overall, like, fixes the problem of I need five volts in a project and I don't want to get a regulator and I don't have exactly five volts. So this boosts up your uh, rechargeable battery to uh, a okay. nice clean output. Okay, so I want to know what's the, uh, I'm going to blend some questions. Blend. This. Yeah, you answered a bunch of the questions people yeah, had. I did. The number one thing was like, can this power Raspberry Pi? But that cylindrical Absolutely. battery, what's the, how much power can that oh, deliver? This? Yeah, so, oh, can we go to the overhead real fast? Yes, Because I'll, I'll, show, I'll show this this fast. So I'm using the new LiPo that we've just, uh, it's actually the original LiPo, which has a weird thing. So this is not actually what's in the store. It's an earlier sample, which now becomes like my property. And this is a 2,000 uh, 2, milliamp hour battery. So the 2,000 milliamp hour battery, it can provide up to two amps. Right now it's just like charging a phone. But from this, it can provide one amp for um, not, let's see, if, if one amp continuously for maybe like three quarters of an hour. Um, because you have to figure out what the capacity is and then divide by the efficiency and then do the math, which, you know, I'm not going to do in my head right now. Um, but, you know, these larger Li-Poly batteries or lithium-ion batteries, we have them in the store. Anything larger than 2,000 milliamp hours, it would be great. Um, you can draw up to an amp, and then if you have a charger doctor, you can see exactly how much current you're using. Most Raspberry Pi projects don't use the full amp. I know that they say yeah. it can go up to an amp, but really, like, I put it, like, an LCD and a Wi-Fi and downloading, and it, like, it gets to like 500 milliamps usually. Um, it's good to have a little bit of headroom, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't actually go so that high. So the little resistors are for what iOS stuff? Yeah, for for iPhones. If you want the iPhone to or uh, the iPod or whatever to kind of be happy and not say this charger's not supported, you need to have these little resistors. So I added those in because just a little more space, yeah. so that you can always um, charge in. You can plug in any iOS device and it will say, but ink. No problem charging. Yeah, if not, it'll say not supported and it scares you. Yeah, and if it yeah. sometimes doesn't charge or whatever, this will work with any Apple device. This is the reverse engineered Apple resistors that I did a couple of years ago. Yeah, there's a good article about it. Okay, yeah. Lady Ada, that was new products. Good work. There. Zoom. Okay, so uh, real quick, um, because we're running a little bit late, the yeah. code is PowerBoost. Don't forget, 10% off in the different store. You only have a couple hours to get on that. Don't forget, we take Bitcoin, we get the freebie deal going on. 
Lady yeah, Ada, we answer, yeah. yeah, if people want to load up a couple questions in the chat right now, we can. I, I got to them as you were doing them. Yeah, I thought I, I, I tried to get the other question. Oh, there's one last thing. For the power boost, I don't use the um, 92 version of the chip, which has 5 volt output. I actually use the adjustable one, yeah. and I adjust it to 5.2 volts. And I do that so that if you're using a USB cable and you're drawing an amp, the USB cables are usually very thin, the, the, the gauge of the wires, and that resistance drops the voltage down. And with Raspberry Pis, this is an issue, because like, yeah. they don't like to go down below like 5. So with that extra 0.2 volts, it means that if there's a voltage drop along the cable, um, 0.1 volt each way, you'll still get 5 volts, but it's, it's 5 volts. It's just a little bit of headroom. It's also good if you want to put a diode on the output for some reason, because you want to do yeah. some, there's some polarity protection in your project. Um, it'll be able to kind of overcome that and still give you five volts. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a quick top secret and answer a couple quick questions. So here's a top secret. If you ever want to know what other Whoa. power boost things we're doing, this is it. Do a screenshot later. You can see the upcoming product line. Yay. All right. We'll next see. up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I can do it. Next up. This is from the desk of Ladya this week. This is a 3.5 inch Pi TFT coming out very soon. You can see it compared to the current one. And this is the upcoming additional version. Yeah, that we're doing. And this that is the resistive. Is the top secret. I'm still working on the capacitive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's still in progress. Um, we're going to answer some of the questions. Um, we're going to give away something very soon. But here are a couple speed rounds. You ready? Okay. Okay. Will the power boost be available in a three volt version? I I got the adjustable with the idea that I will eventually have a three volt version. Okay. But most people, if you want three volts, you'll just use a linear regulator from a lipo. So yeah. I didn't start with that. The two amp battery. What was the voltage? Uh, it's a lithium ion battery, so it's a 3.7 volt nominal is very standard for lithium ion and lithium, lithium polymer batteries. Okay. Um, how would you suggest I customize modifying an existing Debian image? Um, you know, if you, if you just want to make your own thing, you know, you can always, um, you know, load the image into, you know, whatever card or SD card, if it's like a, yeah. a, a beagle bone or something, and then edit it and then try to clean up, you know, all the one-time things and yeah. then read the card off. Okay. I, I don't know what the um, question is exactly. This question is, will you ever take dog coin? Well, um, the thing is, if BitPay does, we will. So uh, contact BitPay. Um, they just got a huge amount of funding. They are a cryptocurrency provider and processor. Um, that's how we process uh, Bitcoin. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, next up. So bug them. Yeah. Next up, Go will you processor. sell the right angle mini USB connector? There's a right angle one. Um, the factory that we ordered them from said they weren't making them anymore, so we're going to look for another place and hopefully get them in, because I do like the right angle style connectors. Okay. And last up, uh, can you be charging while drawing from the power boost? Yes, you can. That makes it a lot better than um, battery packs that often don't like it when you charge and power at the same time. This okay. one will always boost to 5.2 or 5 volts exactly, no matter the input, so you can charge it through a, uh, you can connect the battery through a charger, like a micro lipo or one of our lipo yeah. chargers, and um, just charge it and then get the power out from the USB. Just be aware that there'll be inefficiencies because you're taking five volts, dropping it to 3.7 volts, and then boosting up to five. So you're not gonna get a perfect efficiency. I mean, there's always losses. All right. Good work. It is now time to give away something. Tonight, we're giving away, you power guessed boost. it, Power boost. Oh yeah. All right, Lady you knew Ada, it. what are the rules for okay. the to, for the trivia question? Uh, uh, trivia question rules are if you've won something before, even if you really, really want a power boost, uh, you can't enter only one winner per uh, my lifetime and um, <laughs> I'm still here, so uh, suck it. Uh, and then uh, whoever types <laughs> in the uh, correct answer into the chat with spelling wins a lovely power boost kit. You can boost to your heart's delight. If you don't, you still get 10% off by in the store, it's nine bucks, okay. pretty good deal. Ready for the trivia question, folks? Okay. Ready, ready, ready? What does FRAM stand for? And you have to put the, with the F, the R, and the A, and the M. So type it. It's four words. What's FRAM stand for? And it's not m MARF backwards. You can't just say, oh, it's, it stands for MARF backwards. No. Yeah. So first person I see in the chats. Come on, everyone loves Fram. If, oh, you're, yeah. if you're an MSG430 fan, by the way, you should know this because they're moving right. on to Fram. And it looks like... Who's, who do you want to... Who, who, who do you... So this is... 
Who do you want to do? You this, do is, this? this is fine. This one? Yeah. MTBF0, congratulations. You get a power boost. Email support at adafruit.com. Put that your username was MTBF0. I'll take it with the space. It's fine. Because sometimes it's, it's a dash or something. Yeah. That's fair. He's out in California. Congratulations. You're going to be power boosting like a pro. I think we're going to have a power boost pro. Let me check the secret thing. Oh, are we? Are we? Maybe? Maybe? Gotta go. Okay. All right. So that was a show. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the folks who are part of the Adafruit team that are watching or helping out with the show, all the folks that were on the show and tell. Yeah, you're gonna like put all these like matrices back in the bags after which one is which? This is yellow. All I think. the participants in the show and tell, thank you so much. You make the show and tell what it is, and it's my favorite half an hour every single week. It is fun. And uh thank I want you that boom box. Everyone here at the Adafruit Factory here's working. We have people working here almost a lot. A lot of hours. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Don't forget the code is Powerboost. It's gonna be keep going for a couple hours. We have a lot of cool and exciting stuff. That's going to be going more into stuff the store. going in tomorrow. We didn't we didn't get to everything. Yeah. We had we had even more, and we actually just didn't get to it. Yeah. Wow. And uh, crazy. We'll see everybody next week on more Black Journeys with Becky Stern at two p.m. Show and tell some thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week Wednesday. Yeah. And ask an engineer. Same bat time. Same bat channel. We'll see everyone. Here is a picture of MOSFET who's waiting patiently. Yeah. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. He's guys? like he's at home and he's just like and where are you guys? Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>